Welcome to Halftime Football, where in the fourth part of an eight-part series, I'll be previewing Group D of the 2022 World Cup. So Group D this year is almost identical to Group C at the 2018 World Cup, as Denmark, France and Australia are all together once again, while Tunisia come in in Peru's place. We'll start off by taking a look at Denmark, who have a lot more basis for their optimism this year than they did in 2018. The Danes qualify for this tournament in what was an easy group, but still a group where they won nine in a row and didn't really care for their loss to Scotland in the final game. Even if you still consider that qualifying run to be relatively unimpressive, Denmark managed to defeat world champions France not once but twice in their recent Nations League campaign, finishing in second place in their group just a point behind Croatia. They'll also obviously be massively mentally boosted by their semi-final run at Euro 2020. One of their key players in Qatar will be the man who indirectly spearheaded their run at the Euros, Christian Eriksen, who has recovered miraculously from his cardiac arrest to get back to being the maestro that he was before. He'll be supplying the likes of Jesper Lindstrom, Mikkel Damsgaard and Yusuf Poulsen up front, while Barcelona man Andreas Christensen guards at the back. Midfielder Philip Billing has been surprisingly left out despite starring for Bournemouth this season, while veteran man Yannick Vestergaard will also be watching from his sofa. Denmark are aiming to carry their Euro 2020 momentum with them into this tournament, as they'll want to go further than the round of 16 defeat they suffered to Croatia last time out, and Kasper Hjulmand is more prepared than ever to make that happen. Denmark look poised and ready to make this group their own, and the fans back at home have plenty of reasons to be excited. Moving on to African side Tunisia, who are competing in their 6th World Cup as they look to get out of the group stage for the first time. The Tunisians only just qualified for the tournament, beating Mali 1-0 over two legs to secure their spot in Qatar after a solid showing in their preliminary groups. The Tunisians have also impressed in some minor competitions as of late, reaching the final of the FIFA Arab Cup where they narrowly lost to Algeria as well as winning the Kirin Cup where they demolished a full-strength Japan side in the final after taking Chile to the cleaners just before. Yes, they most recently got whacked 5-1 by Brazil. Brazil, but as an isolated incident, that game really shouldn't deter the Tunisians. They've got one of the oldest and most experienced squads at the World Cup, but still possess the young blood of Hannibal Majri in midfield, while FC Köln man Elias Shakiri is almost guaranteed to start. Journeyman Wabi Kazri brings the flair to the team up front, while Yusuf Msakni and Naim Sliti should excel down the wings. Saif Edin Kawi will feel hard done by as the man playing his trade in France has been left out the squad, but relatively new head coach Jalal Kadri appears to have his team organised and raring to go. In 2018, Tunisia crashed out in the group stages after they were dealt a tough hand, being beaten by both England and Belgium in their first two games to send them home very quickly. Their victory against Panama in the final game instilled some belief in the side, but you best believe that there's a lot more inside of them after their recent performances. Now, as for world champions France, the optimism within their camp surprisingly appears to not be too high. Sure, they went unbeaten in their qualifiers and emerged victorious in the Nations League last year, but it's this year's version of the latter tournament that has a lot of Le Bleu concerned. They picked up just 5 points in 6 games, with their only win coming against Austria at home as they plunged to a 3rd place finish, barely avoiding relegation. Euro 2021 was also massively disappointing for the French as they crashed out on penalties in the round of 16 following a crazy game against Switzerland, so right now things are quite shaky to say the least. That being said though, France no doubt have the the absolute best team on paper. Real Madrid stars Eduard Camavinga and Aurelien Chouameni are expected to dominate their midfield battles, while a devastating front three of Ousmane Dembele, Karim Benzema and Kylian Mbappe is likely to be deployed, which would terrify absolutely anyone. At the back, there's also the likes of Teo Hernandez and William Saliba, but when you look a little bit deeper, France are actually missing a lot of their big hitters. Presno Kimpembe, N'Golo Kante, Paul Pogba, Mike Magnon and Christopher Nkunku are all certain certainly out, while Rafael Varane and Karim Benzema are still racing to be fit things are very concerning for the French to say the least. Le Bleu also come into the tournament aiming to be the champion's curse which has been bestowed upon the last three winners of the World Cup and in this group appear poised to do so, so it's just a case of whether they can hold their own mentally. France's World Cup hopes this year are quite fragile and how they're going to perform in Qatar is quite unpredictable. 
Last but certainly not least in Group D, we had the Australian Socceroos, who just about pipped 2018 group stage opponents Peru to this year's World Cup after beating them on penalties. Despite that high though, Australia appeared to be relatively troubled coming into this tournament in Qatar, as realistically the only team of somewhat decent calibre they beat in their qualifying run was China, as they were overcome with relative ease by the likes of Japan and Saudi Arabia. That being said though, a couple of recent friendly wins against rivals New Zealand see them coming into the tournament with relatively high spirits, even if the opposition was quite shoddy. Some of the key men looking to make their mark in Qatar include veteran goalkeeper and captain Matty Ryan, who will undoubtedly be playing his final World Cup, while Aaron Moy and Riley McGree are tipped to shine in the midfield. However, gone are the days of Tim Cahill up front, as the Aussies have to settle for A-League star Jamie McLaren, though in that forward line, the pace of Awe Mabil is likely to terrify defences. Interestingly though, manager Graham Arnold has chosen to leave out West Brom man Tom Rogic, who completely disrespected the squad by only making himself available after the preliminary qualifying rounds. Hopefully though, this batch of Socceroos can improve on their previous showing in Russia, where they went out with just a solitary point which they gained against Denmark. They'll be looking to get out of the groups for only the second time, and despite the challenge ahead of them, recent results have got the Australian camp feeling very, very good. Now, as for how I think this group will fare, I think it will be relatively close, especially in the battle for second. I reckon Denmark will make it three wins in a row against France and end up finishing on 7 points after drawing with Tunisia, who themselves will just be knocked out on goal difference after finishing on 4 points. France will also draw with the Tunisians and beat the Aussies by a considerable margin which will send them through, while the Aussies will finish on 3 points after beating Tunisia but losing to both Denmark and France. Anyway that's it for my preview and prediction of Group D of this year's World Cup, if you did enjoy please be sure to like and subscribe, be sure to check out my previous 3 previews and let me know what you thought of this one down below in the comments and I'll see you next time. Thank you.